and welcome. Uh, so Peter Berry asked me to do a quick presentation on behalf of CARA on uh, path studies. And so um, I have only a couple slides and then we're gonna do a, a, a live working session just for, for fun. So um, there's the introduction um, and uh, that will be our the link that we'll use. And I wanna give you some resources as well. So here's some resources, we'll just jump to that. Um, Roger in Quebec has done an outstanding job. I've used his software for a number of years um, uh, for, for doing past study work. Um, if you want to understand a bit more, there's a wiki page on it. If you're in the commercial world and we're not, but if you were, the software there, one of the popular pieces of software is called Path Loss. Um, and uh, of course, Re Peter Book's a great place to figure out where towers are. And then I just Google it. I found SCADA core. They, they tell you where cell towers are. That could be useful as well. So let's go jump into a demo. Um, and uh, so first of all, uh, what is a uh, path study? So we want to uh, communicate between two towers. And so we want to know what is in between. Do we have a good radio path in between? And so... Like, as I said, Roger here has put this website together. Uh, he originally wrote Windows-based software, and he still actually has it there, Windows-based software um, that you could use uh, and get all the topographical data and uh, and put that together. Now with uh, web-based, um, the horsepower in a server, it's it's online. So I've got an account. You can sign up to his website and get a free account there. Um, so let's try it out. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, we need to have a two sites to communicate to. So I was thinking, which sites are we going to communicate to? And I thought, you know what, let's do um, RYC, uh, BE6RYC to uh, BE6AUY, or the tower that we have in Wildcat Hills. And so uh, let's put that in. So I'm going to do a new site. I've actually already got them in there, but uh, we'll just do it as a new site. So I'm going to click in. We'll uh, zoom in a bit here. We'll try and find Calgary. And, and th this part is a little bit uh, uh, simple, but we know where RYC is because we know it's on Nose Hill Park. We're getting close. And I'm going to just change the map to um, a uh, satellite image. Oh, that's perfect. Now I can actually see where I'm going. So we can see here as we zoom in, here is the police station and the winter club. We go up a little bit. And there's the parking lot, and there's the old road and the trail that goes up to RYC. So we'll just go a little closer. Tell me if I'm, there we go, look what we see. Okay, so now in the center of the screen, we have RYC. So I'm gonna sit, uh, place center at cursor, is that right? Place cursor at center, there we go. Close enough. And we're gonna submit that. And we are going to call this a new site. And we're going to call it VE6RDY uh, -E demo. But I know which one it is. Okay. Um, and here are... I'm going to add it to my sites. Perfect. So now I'm going to take a look at what sites I have. So I have a number of sites listed here. So there is AUY, and there's the one we just added. So we're going to return to the main menu, um, and we're going to do a new link. That's right here. Okay, so click new link. We're going to go from our RDY, and we're going to go to VE6AUY. So VE6AUY is just west of Cochrane. Um, uh, in Wildcat Hills, uh, if you know where the Wildcat Hills gas plant is, it's about, I don't know, it's about, I'm guessing about five to 10 miles uh, north of there, somewhere in that range. We're going to say antenna height. Hmm. Well, RYC is just a wooden power pole. So we're not going to give it that much height. We're going to give it five meters above ground level. Um, this is a hundred foot tower. But um, you have to be pretty brave to climb it. So 
we're going to say this one is only going to be 10 meters up. That's 30 feet. Um, that's uh, not too bad. We're going to call this something. We're going to call this a VE6. Um, well, I did the wrong call sign there. Whoops, sorry about that. Uh, it doesn't, I'll just change it to RYC. There we go. V6 RYC to VE6 AUI. So what frequency? Hmm. We're going to do a, uh, a 5 gigahertz link. So 5,000 hertz. It's 5.8, I think, but we'll just start there. Uh, transmit power. I don't know what the ubiquity radios are. They're not very much, though. We'll just say a watt for now. Um, and we'll leave this as, as, as standard because I don't know when tennis we're going to use. And we'll hit submit. Ah, so now I can find out. I can't. And I haven't checked what ubiquity's uh, frequency is. But we're going to say it's 825. 58.25. And submit. And now it goes and does its little bit of processing on the back end. And off we go. Okay. So now we can see what our study looks like. So we can see, and I'm going to just make my screen a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit. Uh, tools. I haven't. There we go. Make it one bigger. There we go. Okay. So we can see V6RYC here, zipping along to AUI on top of the, the hills over there. And we have a, a pretty decent path there. Um, there's a map of where it's going. And so we can see we clip a little bit of a, a hill here. Uh, that's got to be somewhere in the middle around Cochrane. That kind of makes sense. And away we go. So um, if we look at our losses, and this is where I run, I run, but we know that 3 dB is about 10 times losses. So um, the, uh, um, the, 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 the signal strength is, 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 I don't, I, I'm not an expert here if that's good enough or bad enough, but let's say for example, and I know that we do have problems with this link. We are, we are going to decide that this is not adequate. So we're going to bounce it off a of pigeon mountain instead. So we're going to go back and I'm going to leave this web page. Go back to here. Whoops, got to log back in again. And we are going to, I don't know if I have pigeon in here. Let's just see if we do. Uh, my site's pigeon is there. So let's say we want to go from RYC the pigeon back to AUI. So we're going to do a new link. Let's turn to my menu. A new link here. We're going to go from RYC to pigeon. And 5825. Do a quick calc. And you'll see that this one has like no obstructions at all. It's a nice clean path. Um, and so, well, at the very end, it has a little bit, but I might have picked the wrong spot. So that I can see a, a really robust path. And then if I go back again to the menu, turn the main menu, if I go from, again, another link, a new link from Pigeon now to AUI, uh, whoops, that's not going to work. And we will see that this is also a very clean path. So when we look at the network infrastructure that Kara has, we choose to go up to Pigeon first and then back down to AUI. And that gives us a very robust path. Um, you can see that the, um, because it's, uh, microwave, the, um, 
the, the propagation is very narrow. So we're going to just change it one time. We're just going to change it to a uh, a VHF link just so we can see what that looks like. So let's do, again, uh, RYC to AUI, and we'll do that. We'll leave it at VHF, 146 megahertz. Hit submit. And there we go. So much wider path and much more forgiving path um, as we do that. So um, I just wanted to kind of share with you kind of some of the the tools that are available and um, and show you that you can very easily check path studies yourself. And so I'll open up to some questions. And I don't know if anybody here has a, a path that they want to look at, and then we can do that as a kind of a second demo. I have a, a comment or a question, sure. which is related to the color along the, uh, the landfall. And there's greens and reds along there. And because I do a lot of SOTUS stuff, so we're often on the ground somewhere. And yes. I think, uh, if you can confirm, that means where it's green, you're likely to be able to hear the station, and where it's red, you, you won't have a chance. Is that right? I do not know the answer to that question. I'm sorry. Um, okay. But they, they, you're referring to the green path yeah, here? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, and, and you can see that on the uh, on the on the right hand side of some of the peaks further along, the shadow sides. Like that red, that, yeah, yeah, like right it's here. like it's you know it's that big flat there, and there's a red line. It kind of looks like okay, you're in the shadow there. You couldn't possibly get it, but it's mostly green on the top of the terrain. Right, for sure. And 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 I should I should have said so. This this yeah. terrain here. That we see here is trees. Like that's the other thing to take into account. Oh, so there is some some ability to um, to take into account uh, structures or trees as well. So that oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that is, and I, I know when I've used uh, the path loss software, that is also uh, an important feature to take into account. Yeah, because we're looking for hills that have good path, but also aren't obscured by trees. Right. Because we're doing some of our microwave contacts into Calgary from a soda hill and that kind of thing. Yeah. A lot of them are blocked, so. Right. Yeah, yeah so this is a, a great tool to figure some of that out there and, and then how, how tall does your antenna need to look, right? So um, let's do another one just for, uh, does anybody have any, and do you wanna do a sample one then just to check it out? Uh, I'm happy to do that. Prairie Blazing? Prairie Blazing. Prairie Blazing to, to Red Deer. How okay, well, let's yes. do that then. Okay, so let's do a new site. So you have to help me find it. Let's go past Bragg Creek. Keep going west. And, yeah. And I'm going to turn on again. I find the uh, satellite image is, is useful. You need to fix 66 going out of uh, Brad Creek, so southwest of Brad Creek. Tell me if I am. Do you see it? Oh, gosh. Do you want to go back to roads? Yeah, maybe roads for a bit. Yeah. There's Highway 66. Um, Brad Creek. How far down Highway 66? It's, near, it's right near Elbow Falls. It's right at Elbow Falls. Elbow there. Falls is about. Uh, I think where Elbow Falls is. Further, yeah, yeah it's somewhere it's further. Yeah. further down. You have to go south. Yeah, yeah. To, after it turns the corner and starts to go sort of straight west again, like way down. There's the Elbow River at the bottom. Is that? Oh, right, right. Yeah, it crosses. The, that's right. Here's where Elbow Falls, this road here crosses. You're right. And so Elbow Falls is in this area here somewhere, right? Do I go to that? I think you're probably too far there. I think it's probably where the bend is. That, that. This right in here? Yeah, right. Well, let's just go back to topographical. So now we, oops, let's, sorry, uh, ping satellite. Yeah. That would be one of the, you know, I didn't uh, think it was going to Let's assume it's right about, the only problem is the elevation is going to, yeah, yeah. is going to, let's just sing it, zoom in a bit more. So we know that the low areas, do you know which side of, of the highway it's on? North side. North, North side. side, okay, North side. up here. Right across from Elbow Falls, it's about uh, one and a half kilometers north, almost due north of the Elbow Falls parking. 
Okay, so let's assume, I'm gonna assume it's right here, because I think that, is that a high point? I'm guessing it is, right? Trees coming up, rock. Let's find out, let's assume it's, whoops. Place cursor at center, whoops. There we go, I'm gonna submit that. We'll just guess. Sure. It doesn't matter if we're right or wrong, really. Um, if you put out there and have your cord set or uh, GPS coordinates. That would be helpful. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So now we've got that. And then you said the other one we want to add is red deer. The U.S. is a little bit off. Anywhere specifically in Red Deer you want to grab or? Uh, on the, there's a repeater on the uh, right hand, uh, on the east bank, um, which is a little higher. East bank a little over here somewhere? Uh, yeah, somewhere over there, yeah. Sure, uh, just want to pick that? Yes. Yeah. Submit. We'll find out if we hit a valley real quick when we do the, uh, okay. the study, right? So Red Deer, add to my sites. So again, um, so now we'll do a new uh, a new link. We're gonna go from Prairie Mountain. We're just gonna leave everything default. We're just gonna leave VHF. We'll just um, leave everything totally default there. Let it run and see what happens. If it's good, I'd like to see it on 1296. Sure. That's what we wanna do. Right, so, so, <laughs> so you're not that great. So I'm not, I wasn't too far off the top of the mountain. I'm a little off. But you can see you have a lot of terrain in between that's going to be problematic. And so let us just... Uh, and these, these white lines are the Fresnel zone. Right? That's right. Right. And they're what, one way, one pass that differ by a wavelength? Or... I do not know the answer to that question. I have not. I'm not a pass study expert. I am just... Okay. Uh, a hack is the right word. There you go. So, intervals like that. What else? Right. Um, and so you can see your losses are quite high. So, but let us. How high? Let's let's just have some fun here. I got the coordinates of Prairie Mountain here. If you want. Do you? okay. Let's we can go with that. Let's hit cancel for a second here. Um. Now go back to my sites. Go to uh, Prairie Mountain. We'll modify that site. What coordinates do you have there? Uh, five zero decimal eight eight eight. Three eights. Yep. Okay. And then negative one one four decimal eight zero six one. That's the exact sum. Should we? Okay, that sounds good. So we'll do a new link. Again, we'll go from Prairie Mountain, and we're just gonna have some fun here. We're gonna say the antenna height of Prairie Mountain is 100 meters tall. Well, it's, Could you just compare uh, 600 <clears throat> meters elevation gain from the road? Right, but we'll say, just for fun, we're gonna give you another 100 meters just to, to lift oh, up, right? On top of, on yeah, top which is unrealistic, yeah. but, but right? And we'll do the same thing in Red Deer. I get a period of 100 meter pole. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So we're going to submit that. With it. Just show what the difference looks like, right? There we go. So, oh, wow. So if you had that 100 meters on either end, which you don't, obviously, you actually clear the majority of that terrain. There is actually a big tower at the uh, repeater. Uh, it's like the red beer. Okay. I don't know how high it is, but it is right. a big uh, because I can hear the beacon. There's a, a 23 centimeter beacon on it that I can hear in Langdon. Okay. Yeah. It's the terrain sort of more towards the red deer side is the problem, I mainly because I guess the curvature of the earth, it's not that high, but it's just enough to get right. Away. <laughs> and that, and I, I have never thought about that, I've never done a link that long. That could be what the brown represents. That's what I was wondering. Oh, cool. yeah. That's the curvature. I was going to ask you if the software took that into account. Yeah, I think it does. It thinks so too. Explain that yeah. lens-shaped uh, dark brown. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So, Ooh, but that's pretty slick. 
Yeah, I know it's you know, and and again, kudos to Roger for putting this website together and for the work that he's he's done there. It's a great tool. Questions yeah. on the oh, is there? Let's chat. Do, let's do that. Then. Um, Let us do that. Yeah, sorry, we've been taking. No, 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 no. It's just we we need to manage the Zoom people as well as you guys and uh, work it out. Zoom, uh, not this one. And one of them was part of the white lines. Uh, I believe we said that the smell zone. So really on this particular view though, those the white lines are below, they're down at ground level, they're not at the tower height. Right. So did I mess that up? I'm not sure. There's a set below and a set above. That's a good question. That's a good, yeah. There's so the Fresnel curves are yeah. not following the path. Modify this link. The yeah. Why did that happen? I don't know why that happened. Use land cover. And you said you wanted 1200? 1296 just relaxed. <laughs> Probably to do something a little closer, maybe Calgary. And what do you think the wattage of that radio is, roughly? Oh, um, try 20, 20 watts would be good. I'll see. I don't know why the, the news at the bottom there, Pat. It's a good question. It shouldn't have been. It should have been up at the top. So, unless modify this link, that's a great question. I'm going to just change it to one meter above. So, is there like a, a help thing that would maybe have some of those uh, details there is, embedded as to what those white there, lines there is? Yeah, no, for sure. And I, I think it is right here. I'll just click. I I don't know. There's some help stuff here. Oh, cool. Okay. I picked the French one, so I have to. No, that's good. Just the that there. Go now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know why it's good at the bottom there. I don't know if where it's doing that. But anyway, yeah. Okay, my first question is, what if I already know where one tower is, and or perhaps several, and I want to add another one? Will this tool help me figure out a good location for that? Uh, it will not uh, help you find locations per se but you can add as many sites as you want so you can see in for example i have a number of sites listed here so you just keep adding sites and and, and through the map function that's the the best way to do it. you kind of keep looking around okay here looks like a hill or here's a place where i have access to maybe it's my friend's acreage or whatever that is and then you choose that does that work right so an example was i was wondering i was looking at doing a link from the usc engineering building to their ranch they have just outside of Cochrane. And I'll just do a quick link there, Clinton, for that, just to, to show that, because um, I know that one doesn't work. Um, new link from Engineering Ranch to there, hit Submit. And there we go, right? So it's a mess, right? So then you're like, okay, that's not gonna work. I need to find something else. Does that answer your question? Uh, that helps, yes. All right, we'll go on to my second question then. What if I was trying much shorter scale links, like um, a few blocks away in a town or a city? Is this going to help? I'm thinking the, the topographical information is going to be hard to interpret. I won't know if it's the top of a building or, or the ground level. Yeah, you're obviously right. So uh, for building congestion, I would say this is not a good tool. Um, uh, if you are looking to get uh, maybe halfway across Calgary and just want to see is is Nose Hill in the way, for example, then that would make sense. Like, again, I'll do one more real quickly just for your uh, for your benefit. I'll modify this. I'll do my house, which I think is this one here, to uh, RYC. Um, RYC is there. Smith. If I can just make a comment while you're looking yeah. that up there, uh, Clinton. Um, the, my understanding of radio mobile is that there's basically two parts to it. There's originally a comer commercial uh, um, program that you needed to buy. That's right. And, and that would give you information on coverage from a particular spot. Like if you were setting up a receiver, it would tell you, you would produce the map that will show you the coverage. But um, Roger has made it available to amateur radio people for nothing. But it basically does site to site. 
So you 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 can say, well, what you know, go from this tower to that mountain top or whatever, but it doesn't give you the sort of general coverage maps. So I, I think I'm right on that. Right. Yeah, here you're right. The official radio mobile website, I believe this is the one you're referring to here. Yeah, so this one, they got to have an incentive yeah. to buy the, the not freeware that would do sort of the sweep function, as it were, but it has absolute elevation data all over the place, and it's scanning, looking for the high points. And For sure. Yeah. And then path loss would be a competing product as well that you can uh, purchase. That's, yeah, so. But we're hands, we're cheap. We, we are, we're a thrifty, <laughs> we're a thrifty buyer. So. Yeah, but anyway, so this is the link from my house. I live up by uh, CLP, and, and then here's the Boulder Valley, and then uh, um, here's RYC on Oak Hill, right? So you can see within a a, a, um, a relatively short distance what the topography. So everybody understands Calgary terrain, but it doesn't know that your neighbor's chimney is a certain height. That's exactly right, right? So, and I, I've had like basically no height on the antenna, right? It knows there's some trees here, and there's some trees in the way on the hill, right? And so you have to you have to have a little bit of elevation to clear the trees. I'm curious why the train blew there. Yeah, that's a different color. Yeah. I'd have to Google that. I don't know if that is. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't think it's snow cover. Yeah. <laughs> when you did the map from the ranch to the engineering building, yep. there was blue over next to the ranch on the approach side of the hill, but then it was it didn't run across the length of the hill after one past the peak. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm not sure there's in the blue and the green. I need to play that yeah. there. See, there you've got the, the blue over yeah. on the left. And the blue, I, I don't know. It, it could be, could it be, because that's in the city portion. Could that be buildings maybe? I don't know. I don't know. That would be my interpretation. Too. Yeah, so. I'd have to Google. I just mostly wanted to give a quick outline. Hey, the software's out there and it's a great tool to use. And 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 again, kudos to Roger for putting it out there for us hams to use. Any Clinton, any questions from you or anybody else that has questions? It's definitely meaty. It's worth looking through the, uh, the help stuff to get into some of those details about the white lines and the colors. Uh, there's There's some richness there. For sure. For sure. And I have a, a peer of mine that uh, works at Catch Engineering and does nothing but um, uh, telecommunications work, right? And so that's their expertise. And um, it's a it's a, a, a science or a, a career unto itself, right? Just to find those 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 right paths. So, um, the other thing, obviously, and that's a whole other. Uh, issue is 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 the spectrum radio spectrum available for you to 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 in that in that region right so um of course in in, in our part of the province Ken Oki looks after uh the amateur radio spectrum and, and trying to register that so yeah, that's so why I was asking about 1296 because we can we can use that you know it's a it's a hand band nice yeah. microwave hand band yeah. at the bottom end of the microwave and it's got a, it's some prospects of getting 50 or 100 kilometers. It's been done in Europe by soda guys up to what 200 thing, yeah, which is really impressive, like from hilltop to hilltop. Right. So, yeah. Well, the line, the line of sight is a huge thing, right? Sure. So. That's especially the high frequencies, right? Us, even even getting trees in the way of that frequency. You're done. Is Absolutely. Yeah. I know I did a, a telecom project at 11 gigahertz, right? And then it is, you at, at that frequency, you want to do a, uh, not only the, the desktop path study, you do a visual path study as well. Have your, oh. your radio tech climb the tower with the binoculars and make sure that you're not missing something that the desktop study missed, right? Like, so maybe like you said, maybe a house is in the way or who knows what, yeah. right? So, yeah. Um, so excellent, yeah. Any other questions there from the the, the the online folks? If if we have enough time, we do. Um, have, I was hoping when I saw the original topic out that it was going to be HF coverage. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm not. I don't play in HS span much, but we can take a look there for sure. Which uh, let's let's modify a link. 
Ben's not smart enough to tell you what the Faraday rotation is going to be. <laughs> Probably, no. But, I mean, I know that ARL has some um, software that's related to, uh, you know, looking at takeoffs from tops, tops of cliffs or right. looking, you know, like a, a hill slope, you know, and sometimes you're better off moving down the summit on yeah. the some of those things, I, and so I, I mean, we're doing social stuff, right? So yep. we're setting up uh, antennas on mountain tops, and and uh, any guidance and stuff would be. Uh, I, I do not have any for you there, unfortunately. Um, um, I know, as an example, we have a, a Kara has a repeater at Fortress, and the link in there is nine hundred megahertz, and that one we bounce off of a rock face. Oh. to get to the um, tower just because that's the only path that we have. Right? Well, those were great. We've been down yeah. on Powder Face Trail and the best signal to RYC is, is the exact opposite direction, bouncing off Powder Face Ridge. Right, exactly. It's amazing. That just, just like a mirror, that nice <clears throat> cliff there. Yeah, I know. I, I'm gonna, um, uh, I was working um, on a project in, uh, in Kitimat and I was looking at some of the infrastructure that uh, BC Hydro has. I was fascinated by um, there. They have a, a reflector for their, their microwave link and same thing. So they actually built a steel, it was like a movie theater. It's a big steel plate. And there, that was the only way to get the path in. So they bounce off the steel plate and back and fascinating. So, yeah. So my understanding with that uh, reflection off the rock face at the fortress was that the Doug had spun the antenna around and just as a lark, he pointed it exactly the wrong direction and had a great signal. That's right. But that signal failed the first snowfall. So all the rocks that were bouncing off oh. had moisture covering them and it changed completely. Absorbed it, yeah. Okay, interesting. I'm not saying definitively, but I, yeah, no, no, Pat, no, I wouldn't doubt that. So, yeah, yeah, so, so, so that's good. So, excellent. Any other questions there? Sorry, we got tons of them more. I have anyway. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, one of the things that happens with the um, the, the RYC into Powder Face Trail, right, when they're doing the rallies and stuff, is that you get fading during the day, and and sometimes you can get it back by moving the uh, the, uh, the the link. So what's going on? Why is the propagation changing during the day? Well, you know, I do not someone... know the answer to that question either. I, w I wish I did. That's fascinating. Atmospheric density. Like I'm just wondering if that's somehow I, changing it. I know Dana has spent quite a bit of time uh, analyzing all of this, but one of the things is there's, there's obviously multi-path interference. Okay. And so you have to consider that adding to whatever propagation uh, characteristics there are. Okay. So yeah, if you so if you have not much change, that might cause the diffraction pattern of the multi-path right. really and and he's described. Um, you doing the five foot adjustment, the, the brake pedal adjustment, <laughs> yeah. where you move ahead and suddenly the signal's great. Right now. Yeah. And, and it's very obvious. Like he was saying in some of his tests, he would move the car just gradually. And it was really, you know, absolutely a picket fence. Like it was wow. interfered, bulk wide interfered, bulk wide. Oh. So the slightest difference is going to make a huge difference for a specific location. I mean, yeah. that was at two meters. Yeah, two meters. That's right. Exactly. Interesting. Good. Excellent. Well, there you go. I will uh, leave you, Pat, to the next presentation.